welcome to this review of my Cherry G80 5000 HAAUS, also known as the MX5000, possibly the most famous and expensive cherry board out there. Just like the M15 is the holy grail of IBM Buckling Springs keyboards, the MX5000 is the holy grail of Cherry MX boards, and for all the same reasons. Just like the M15, the MX5000 was the only ergonomic split model they ever made, and it's a legacy model, and because it's a split ergo board, the demand wasn't very high, so only a small number were sold. Therefore, it's rare, and if you want one, you're probably looking at a price tag in excess of £500. Thankfully, I didn't pay that. This one is on loan to me for a review, so it's not actually mine. Now, normally, I wouldn't even try to use a model like this, as I can't really do the whole ergo stuff. But because it's such a rare and special board, and such a cool bit of cherry history, I decided I would, yes, actually would, use this for a whole week as usual, and in split mode to at least some degree as well. See, that's one of the better features of the board as far as I'm concerned. Unlike some split ergo boards, like the well-respected Microsoft Natural Keyboard, which I found at the recycling center quite regularly, even new in box on some occasions, yet never bothered to take them home, and which is fixed in a certain angle and position, the MX5000, again like the IBM M15, is highly adjustable. You can adjust the splitness, if that's a word. You can adjust the angle on either side using a whole bunch of flip out feet. You can adjust the elevation, etc. You can even use it unsplit, in which case it's basically a 75% like layout. I started off relatively unsplit and moved gradually further out. And yes, I even played games on it, which wasn't as bad as you'd expect, although the F2 key on this one doesn't register properly, so working with Uplay was a bit of a challenge, but other than that, it's really not that bad. The biggest challenge was, of course, typing on it, because while I can type without looking at a keyboard, I don't do it the officially approved touch type way, so I don't do the whole spastic spider glued to the home keys getting electrocuted thing, but I type in a more free-floating way. This means I sometimes press a key that's actually supposed to be pressed with the right hand using my left hand. And with a split board like this, that means you have to reach all the way across the chasm to reach it, which feels very unnatural at first. It's particularly often with the Y and H keys, which I've discovered I type with my left hand rather than the right. To be honest, I think if I use this for longer than a week and actively try to change my perverted ways, I can learn to touch type on this much more easily than on a normal keyboard, and the angle is actually kind of comfortable in an odd way, but overall, it's still just not for me. The switches are Cherry MX Brown, and I'm glad they are, because I've had so many requests to review these, and this board is highly appropriate for it, because it's the first Cherry board that came with them. Back then they were called Ergo Soft Switches, and they were originally developed for a Kinesis keyboard, but to be honest, I don't see what's so ergo about them. Of course, nowadays they're generally pitched as a kind of hybrid gaming typing switch, but of course, as everyone knows, they're crap at both. They have the same weighting as Cherry Amex Reds at 45 grams, but they introduced a tactile bump by making a tiny notch in the slider prongs here, which slightly disrupts the key travel. I've mentioned this on several occasions, but I consider this a really pathetic way of introducing tactility, and the result is that it feels not so much as a tactile bump as it is a mildly rocky road, which is why many people refer to them as scratchy reds. The tactility is super weak, unclean, not very sharp, and it doesn't even match up with the actuation point very well. Basically, it's just a linear switch with a shadow of a hiccup in it, and it's easily among the worst tactile switches I've ever tried, and I've tried a lot of them. I mean, last week's Apple keyboard has better switches. Even a good rubber dome board blows them out of the water. I don't like MX Reds that much, but it's better than this. They even ping a lot if you listen closely. Here, I'll show you. The construction is pretty bad, quite flimsy really. 
I mean, this is pretty common on cherry boards, which are generally built like crap. Basically, they're thin, hollow plastic cases with a PCB floating around in it and no mounting plate. But in this case, it's worse because the hinge that connects the two halves is a very thin strip of plastic, which is really fragile. And every time I pick it up, I'm afraid I'll break it because the weight of one of the halves seems enough to snap it clean in half. It does come with wrist rests on each half, which are pretty comfortable though. The keycaps, on the other hand, are really nice. They're Cherry's old, thick, double-shot caps. The lettering on these never wears off, and it looks really clean and high contrast. Cherry no longer make them as they sold the tooling to GMK, but they're delicious. They are ABS, so they will yellow over time, although these ones haven't yet, and because they've seen a good amount of use, they have lost their texture and gotten quite shiny, but they're still great caps. A really cool feature of this board is the two-part spacebar, which you can extend to make them easier to hit. If you're working with the split open, it's very nice, quite useful, and it seems a well-thought-out feature. The layout is pretty interesting, with five extra F keys on the left, up to F17, and the keys on the right are kind of jammed into a line, which makes it look like a 75%-ish board. But the weirdest feature is this numb lock light. Now you might think, what's so weird about that? But if you look closely, there's no numb lock button, and <laughs> even if there was, there's no numpad, so it wouldn't do anything anyway. I really miss the numpad, especially the numpad enter key, because this board is an ANSI model, and I keep missing the enter key on it. Overall, this is an awesome bit of cherry history, and if I wanted to learn to touch type or type ergonomically, this would probably be a really good board for it, because it seems well thought out. But really, I do find without all that, and the switches are just terrible, possibly even worse than MX Black in my opinion. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing, in split mode, on this keyboard.